So one of the things I like to do on this channel for you is present new ways of thinking for you guys, things that can really help you and benefit your, your life and to keep an open mind and look at other things that maybe you're not quite seeing. And constantly we're subjected hour after hour, especially if you look at the internet or turn on the TV, you're subjected and bombarded with propaganda. And one place we certainly get a lot of propaganda is our universities. Now, I went to the stereotypical large American, very liberal university. And something I'll say about this is universities like this, and they're all pretty much the same, but these universities are very interesting because they have so much good, so much excellent things about them, but also at the same place, at the same time, so much completely terrible things about them, so much nonsense. And of course, these universities, it's about indoctrination. This is not some kind of crazy conspiracy theory. Anyone that's ever went to one of these places that has any kind of working brain at all, you go to class and it's just they're telling you what to believe day in, day out. And I actually subscribe to my old university's YouTube channel, Eastern Michigan University. And one of the things this university's always prided itself in is diversity. And they're still putting out all these videos, and that's what they're promoting about the university is how diverse it is. Now, I'm not one of these people that's going to say, oh, diversity is all bad or diversity is great. Personally, I don't think it's so black and white. I think there are actually some positives to diversity. And, of course, there's definitely a lot of negatives to it. Now, the question shouldn't be whether diversity is good or bad. The real question should be, do the negatives outweigh the positives of it? Or do the positives outweigh the negatives? Is it worth it? And the answer you'll get, quite frankly, depends on who you ask. To some people, the answer is going to be, yes, any negatives at all that come with it, the positives far outweigh those. And of course, if you ask a lot of other people, especially these days that aren't buying into the pro propaganda, people are becoming more and more aware of this stuff. Many people, of course, they're going to say, no, it's not worth whatever benefits we get. And funny enough, if you ask these people to name the benefits of diversity, most of the time they can't. They rely on slogans like, diversity is our strength. Oh, really? then why don't you show me some evidence for this or explain how? Typically, they have nothing to say. They just repeat these mantras over and over again. And they never actually have any kind of supporting evidence, any kind of facts showing that it's our strength. And if they say anything at all, it's typically the very old thing of, well, look at all the great food we have. We can eat all this great Mexican food. We can eat this great African food. We can eat all this great Asian food, whatever. That's, the, that's typically the only thing they can say is the advantage. It comes to food. As if we can't just get recipes from anywhere in the world and duplicate them. But I came across this video, and this is a video that they want to promote. The impact of diversity, the positive impact that you get of our diverse university. And they want to promote black excellence. Now, me personally, and most other white people, I think, they have no problem with promoting black excellence. And certainly, I think black people could use a lot more positive role models. But obviously, the problem incurs that there's that hypocrisy, that we're not allowed to promote, obviously, white excellence. We're not allowed to even take any kind of pride in our culture, our heritage, in the accomplishments that our forefathers taken. So, of course, there's that hip hypocrisy. And that's what upsets white people. White people don't have a problem with black people or Hispanics trying to take pride in their background or their culture, whatever is good about their background. It's just we're not allowed to do the same. And this video that I'm about to show you very much illustrates that. Another thing about diversity is they keep talking about how isn't it great our city's becoming more and more diverse, which obviously means the percentage of white people are going down. Like in the old days in Los Angeles, they'd be like, oh, our city's 20% Hispanic. Isn't that great? Oh, now our city's 30%, now 40% Hispanic. Like, well, what's the proper percentage? Shouldn't it be getting better and better the higher that percentage gets? But do you really, if you look around, is it better? I'll, I'll leave that for you to decide. 
But let's take a look at the video. First of all, let me say, very nice black power shirt that this guy is wearing. It's kind of funny to me that the university asks this guy to come in because they want to use him in a promotional video. What does this guy put on to show that he's this success story that graduated from our university? Well, gee, I think I'll wear a black power shirt showing the black power fist. Can you imagine if they asked me to come in and do a promotional video and I wore a white power shirt? You think they're going to allow that? They're never going to publish a video of that. They're probably just going to tell me to get out of there. But after all, this is a video promoting diversity and black excellence. So let's take a look. This guy owns a power and a uh, heating and cooling company in Detroit, Michigan. And I, I don't wish this guy well. I'm happy that he's successful. I got nothing against this guy. But Toward excellence. And what does black excellence mean for you? Black excellence to me means being able to excel in every field of endeavors that you come across and just reaching for stellar achievement over any obstacles that you may experience throughout life. That's not a bad answer, but how is that different than white excellence or brown excellence or any other type of excellence? It's, it's a good, well thought out answer, but it's not really, it doesn't have anything seemingly to be have to do with being black whatsoever. Is there anything you'd like to add? Is there anything you'd like to add? Um, yes, I'd like to add that during my time at EMU, it was a really good moment for me because I was from Detroit, Michigan, so the interaction that I had with um, other ethnicities was very limited. Um, what he just said there is very interesting. He said he's from Detroit, Michigan, so his interaction with other ethnicities was very limited. Think about it, Detroit, Michigan, a city with an extremely low population, a low percentage of white people living there, possibly out of the entire nation, that might have the few, lowest percentage of white people living in at that city, but it wasn't very diverse, his upbringing. Well, obviously it's not very diverse if you grow up in a city where everyone's black, but one of the pushes of diversity is obviously lowering the percentages of white people which brings up the question that they never talk about is what's the proper percentage where things will be ideal? Is it Detroit where maybe 5% of people are white? Well, I don't know. You tell me. Walk around Detroit. If you, if you survive, then you can tell me what you think of it. Being at EMU, it allowed me to expose myself to a broader aspect of networking and diversity. Um, and Eastern was really big on diversity when I first came. I um, mean, it helped me out a lot in after college life as well. It helped you a lot in after college life. Well, you still live and work in Detroit, Michigan. So presumably most of the people you, you deal with are black people, not very diverse. <laughs> But something else that's interesting, he said, apparently he had no, he didn't have any diversity in his life growing up in, in Detroit, Michigan. But there's this place, Eastern Michigan University, which is about 30 minutes outside of Detroit when there's no traffic. And like he got this great diversity here, like he couldn't experience this before going to this university, even though. This was only like 30 minutes away, really less if you go to a, a closer place right side out of De right outside of Detroit. Uh -oh. <laughs> well, there you go. We, we had that, but I have some interesting experiences at Eastern Michigan University. A lot of good experiences, even though I like to rag on my old university. But before I get to that, it's funny how he taught how this video promotes diversity and how inclusive, I guess, is what they're trying to say. Yet last week I shared with you this story from Nathan Phillips, the Indian man that got in the face of that smiling white MAGA teenager, where in 2015 he claims Eastern Michigan students harassed him because he's an Indian. And I broke down that story last week. So what are we to believe? Eastern Michigan University is this this tolerant place that loves diversity? Or are we to believe what this Indian guy said that there are a bunch of hateful bigots, the students there. Well, obviously, Nathan Phillips is a flat-out liar, and I broke down why his story's false last week. But I have a few interesting stories about 
my time at Eastern Michigan University, I'm not from Michigan. I'm from North Dakota, which at the time, of course, was just about all white people except for our, our, our minority population, which was mostly Indians. But I did go to Eastern Michigan University, which I was exposed to a lot of people of a lot of different other, other races, other cultures, other nationalities. And that's not a bad thing. I do believe it, it is good to be exposed to that to some extent, at least it's good. And the coach that recruited me for the wrestling team, I went on scholarship, wrestling scholarship. The coach that recruited me, he was a black man and he was my coach for two years. Great coach, great man. I have nothing, I have nothing but positive things to say about him. Uh, like a, a good influence on my life, definitely. But they ended up firing him two years after my first two years there. That's a whole nother story in itself that I can't get into. I don't think he deserved to be fired, but that's another issue. And since they fired a black man and in college sports, there's not a lot of black head coaches at division one universities and they fired a black man. So of course they had to replace him with a black man. The, the man they hired to be a coach after him was also black. And that's not meant to be a diss to him or an insult to him. He was the coach that they replaced him with. He was a great man. He was a very professional man, very uh, all around good guy. So I have nothing negative to say about the replacement either. But our wrestling team was maybe 20 to 30 percent black. And since the, the replacement coach... He was a very professional guy, and that means he spoke English well. <laughs> so, but one time in the locker room, the black guys were talking, and interesting enough, talking about diversity, the black guys on the wrestling team, they did not like to hang out with the white guys, generally. It's like self-segregation. So you can brag about how diverse these university, universities are. Try going to a cafeteria. The black guys sit with the, the black people sit with the black people, the white people with the white people, the Asians like to sit with other Asians a lot of the times, the Hispanics like to sit with. So everyone kind of self-segregates, even though we're supposed to be so multicultural. People segregate naturally on their own, it seems. And the black guys, they didn't really like hanging out or chatting with the white guys on the team, even if they were invited. But one time, the black guys were all talking and they were talking about this coach, the second coach. And one of the guys said, man, he's always trying to act white. He thinks he's a white guy. He wants to be a white guy. Look at the way he's trying to talk like a white guy. And one of, one of the white guys on the team overheard the black guy say this. And he actually stepped up and he confronted him. And he said, look, just because he speaks English that way does not mean he's trying to act white. He's just being a normal guy. That's what normal people speak like. They speak proper English. So it's kind of funny how even in this one subgroup amongst themselves, amongst black people, they will get on and criticize other black people. So it kind of shows you a lot about the diversity and the way these universities, this university of mine that prides itself on diversity, like I said, people naturally tend to segregate on their own, even on our own wrestling team, which is kind of supposed to be like a family, ideally. And they didn't like to hang out with the white guys. And then they actually had the audacity to criticize our black coach just because he's a professional, well-behaved, normal speaking guy. Speaks English like a normal professional person would. Not like a dummy. And they had to criticize him for this. So this is just a, more stuff to think about, more stuff to be aware of. I know a lot of you guys have to go to universities because you might need a degree to do whatever you want to go into in life. Mine, I have a film degree. It hasn't earned me any money whatsoever, but I had a lot of great time at college. And I was talking to my dad recently about these universities, how they're mostly a waste of time and money for people. And my dad kind of uh, rebuted me a little bit and he gave me a good point where he said, well, a lot of it is you get out what you put into it, like anything else in life. So that kind of changed my thinking a lot. There's a lot of other classes I could have taken even as electives that would have been a great benefit to me in my life even today. So you, that's another thing to put out. Do your best. If you're going to do something like this, you get out what you put in. That's a, that's a good lesson to learn. So you can share your experiences at your universities and 
Maybe you don't need to go to university. I was telling other people that if you really want a good education, especially something that can educate you in a way to actually make money in a practical way, I feel like junior colleges, they're actually more beneficial and definite, certainly a lot cheaper than these major universities. But depending what you do, you might need a major university or some kind of university degree. And one of the things I also like to talk about is it's important who you surround yourself with. So when you're choosing a university, keep that in mind, maybe choose. And I wasn't aware of these things. A lot of these things that I educate you about on this channel, I wasn't aware of these things myself. So I'm trying to share this information with you. And hopefully you're young enough that you can actually implement it into your life. But choose a university where, especially the prestigious universities, if you can go, I know I was being recruited by some of these schools like Harvard or Stanford. The thing is, it's not just the university classes that matter. What's really important is it's going to put you in an environment to be around very successful people, and that's going to rub off on you. So when you're choosing a university, that should also be a major factor, what kind of people you'll have the opportunities to be around. So I think if you really think about what I said and take this to heart, hopefully you're entertained, but I think it's also going to help you out. And you can leave a comment with your experiences at your university, or if you're not in a university yet, what you're hoping to get out of it.